Hi everybody, welcome back to Mr. Drew Paints With You. I'm home visiting my parents for uh, Christmas break. Uh, it's, it's really nice, it's after 2 o'clock p.m. I'm still in my pajamas and um, I wanted to show you today how to put together a sectional frame. I think that could be helpful for you as you get your artwork ready to present. So I'll have you join me over here at the table and uh, I'll show you what you need to do. All right, so here's what you're going to need for putting together a sectional frame. You'll need your artwork. And I just posted the video of, uh, of my finished drawing of this uh, last week. So you'll need your artwork. Uh, I'm having a mat here. The mat is going to protect the work and it also adds a nice color accent to the piece. And then a piece of backing here. This is a, um, some acid-free foam core. And I try to get everything acid free as much as possible. That's going to prevent yellowing and cracking and fading over the years. So how I attached my artwork to the mat, uh, I'll turn it over for you here. I just have one piece of acid free tape holding the drawing at the top. You only want one piece of tape. If you have tape all the way around the drawing, then depending on humidity and the environment, uh, the drawing can actually buckle or wrinkle. So that gives it the ability to expand and contract, just attaching it with one piece of tape at the top. All of these supplies are courtesy of Hobby Lobby. Uh, I worked in the frame shop there for a couple years and uh, I think as an artist, knowing how to frame your own artwork is one of the more valuable skills you can learn aside from just making good artwork. Uh, so you'll need your mat, you'll need your artwork, you'll need uh, your backing, you'll need a piece of glass or glazing is what they call it. I went with acrylic here which is basically like plexiglass mostly because this is a gift for my brother-in-law and he'll be traveling back to Canada with it. Plexiglass is not going to break uh, like glass will. It can break but it's not going to shatter like glass would. Uh, and you want to make sure this is UV protectant, uh, that it will protect from ultraviolet rays. So you can get regular glass or the acrylic with the ultraviolet protection on it. And then after that, you will need your sectional frame pieces. So a sectional frame is just these metal bars. And this is a really nice way to get more of a custom size frame. Uh, without having to pay custom frame prices. And also this is kind of last minute and it's easier to get a quick frame done rather than having to wait a couple weeks for it to come in. So they had some black uh, frame pieces at Hobby Lobby and they come in one or two inch increments. So I measured my drawing, I decided how big do I want uh, the drawing to be and then I decided how much mat do I want around the drawing and then I just uh, rounded it up to the nearest inch and then I picked the height and width sizes for the sectional frame and uh, so that works really well too. Uh, rather than having to cram the drawing in a pre-made frame that I don't like the size of, this really is a good option. Uh, so you'll need your sectional frame pieces. You'll need, they come in sets of two, so you'll need a set for your height and a set for your width. And then there's a little baggie that usually comes with it. Uh, you'll need it. It comes together with all the hardware to assemble the frame. There's the acid-free tape you'll probably need uh, for attaching your artwork. You'll need some wire cutters, some wire, hanging wire, uh, a screwdriver. This one, I just need the flat head screwdriver. Some sets you might need the Phillips head. And because I have the black frame, I have a, a, a marker here. I'll show you what that's used for in a second. And then also bumpers. These are gonna help protect your wall when you hang your piece and uh, keep it from sliding around. So here before I assemble the sectional frame, and this is only if it's a black frame, um, sometimes the corners don't join perfectly and you'll see a little bit of the silver showing uh, through the corners. So just an easy trick to make sure that that doesn't show up. Take your black marker and just color over the edges. I've already colored over all these edges. You can see here there is the uh, the silver still showing so uh, that wouldn't be visible because that's the back part of the frame but especially up on the front and top you want to make sure that is covered with uh, the magic marker and that's just going to make a cleaner presentation that's a trick i learned at hobby lobby in the frame shop 
So to start with, I've got my sectional pieces here. I'm just joining three of them because the frame has this channel where you slide your backing, your artwork, uh, your mat, and your glass. That all fits in there. So you need one side open in order to get that all together. So join three pieces and you need these corner brackets for that. Each corner needs a solid plate and a plate with two screws in it. And this will come in that little baggie of hardware that you need to assemble the frame. So what these do is they fit inside that back channel. Here's the channel where the artwork fits in. And then this upper little channel is where these brackets fit in. So you put those in there, you join the other side on there, then you tighten that screw down and it pushes against the, uh, the plate in there and that creates enough tension to hold the frame together. So I've got those three sides joined and then I'm getting ready to put my artwork in there. So uh, I'm, I'm wearing gloves right now, mostly because I don't want to get oils on everything and especially the glass. This acrylic, once you take off the protective sheeting, there's a lot of static electricity and so it can, it can pick up a lot of dust. So what I am going to do here I'm wearing my gloves to protect it from oils and all kinds of things like that. And then I'll just give it a quick wipe. Uh, black mats are really nice, but they are just awful for picking up lint. It's just really easy to see the lint on there. So you want to make sure that all the dust is off of your mat, off of your glass, uh, before you put it in the frame. You can always take it back out and uh, and clean it up, but that's kind of a pain. I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive, and when I used to work at the frame shop, I would put a picture together and everything was fine, and, and then I'd look once it was all together and I saw there was a little bit of lint on the inside of the frame, so I'd have to tear it all apart again, and sometimes I would do that four or five times before I was happy with it, so uh, if you have an air compressor, I don't think I'd use canned air because sometimes that can shoot liquid out the compressed uh, air. But like a, an air compressor with a blow gun or something can help to get all the dust off. All right, so after about 10 minutes or so, I think I finally got most of the lint off. There's probably still some in there, but uh, I think this is good enough for now. So what you want to do is pinch everything together. You get, once again, your glass, your mat, your art, your backing, and I'm going to flip it over. I guess you really don't have to flip it over if you set your frame up the right way to start with. But here I'm on the back side of the frame and I'm just going to slide it into these grooves here. Remember that channel. So just slide it in there. You want to make sure it's all the way in there. Uh, and then I do like to flip it over real quick just to make sure there's no last goobers in there or anything. Okay. So now we're ready for our last piece of the sectional frame. So here I've got my last piece with those last two corner brackets in there. I'm going to slide these in to the frame. And make sure sometimes you have to push up on the glass to make sure that all fits in that channel. You want that a nice tight corner. Then we take our screwdriver here. Make sure your corners are lined up nice and square. I'm going to make these pretty tight. And the last corner here, hold those pieces together. I'd like to thank my mom. She is my faithful cameraman. Say hello, mom. Hello, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to say something. So yeah, I, uh, 
This is really nice having somebody hold the camera. So there, that is all together. Let me double check the front side again. Make sure the corners are nice and tight. That looks good. Okay. So now, right now, the, everything's kind of still sliding around in the frame. So you need these spring. They're kind of like a leaf spring. They also come in that hardware packet. And these are going to help create tension between the frame and the backing. So you can spread these out. You just push them down and slide them underneath the frame. So they're nice and hidden there. I'll probably put two at the top and bottom and then maybe two or three on the sides. Let me see how I that. Maybe I can only do two on each side depending on how many come in your kit. If you have cotton gloves, that's maybe a little bit nicer to work with than the vinyl gloves, but we do what we can with what we have. Okay, so now everything is nice and tight in the frame. Let's turn it over. Cool, okay. So I'm happy with how that's looking. I know there's probably glare for you. Um, so a couple finishing touches to the frame. On the back, I wanna put a hanging wire. The hardware kit also, it comes with these hanging brackets. It does not come with the wire, so you have to buy your own wire. So this is something you wanna make sure, double check what side is, is top, what side is bottom. I've put the hanging wires on upside down before. So uh, just save, your save yourself the headache and double check. So usually you want the hanging wire, or at least the brackets, to be one third of the way down the entire height of the frame. So here I have 23 inches high. So that would be maybe, let's say seven and a half inches. I know that's not perfectly one third, but that'll be fine. So right around one third of the way. Now you And I will mark on both sides with the pencil where I want that bracket to go, just to make it even. And the nice thing about these brackets, I used to think you had to have the frame open to slide it in, but they will fit right in there. So let me do that again. You can just wedge it in there. You wanna make sure that the uh, left and right lip of the frame are catching on that bracket. And so here, just like the corner pieces, there's a screw. So I hold that where I want it. I tighten the screw down. And I do the same on the other side. And now for the wire. There's different ways you can tie the wire in there. I'll show you the way that they taught me at Hobby Lobby. You can, honestly, you can just tie a regular knot and then just wrap it around itself. But what I like to do is I pass, I pass the wire through the hole from the top side. Then I wrap the wire up and over itself like that. And then I pass it back through underneath the bracket and then through that loop again. I'll show you again on the other side. This is something you have to practice a lot if you want to do that knot. I can't remember if that's a clove hitch or what type of knot that is, but it's a nice neat knot. And then to finish it, you just wrap it around itself and get these tight little coils. If you've got excess at the end, you can just snip it off. But that's plenty. I usually want it to wrap around maybe four or five times. Then I'll stretch the wire all across to the other side. I don't want it perfectly taut. If it is just straight like that, it's going to be more likely to shift and slide on the wall. So what I like to do is give a little bit of a um, little bit of slack there. That will let the picture hang without sliding over the nail. And I'll give myself a little more wire than I think I need past the bracket. And I snip it off. You might hear my mom's bird twinkles in the background. He's my little brother. Yeah, let's take a shot of twinkles over there. Ah. 
Okay, so then we do the same knot on the opposite side here. Here, make sure there's not too much slack in the wire. I don't want it hanging above the frame. Let's get that right about where you want it. So once again, pass through, down through the top of the bracket, wrap over the wire, pass it back up underneath the bracket, and then through that first loop again. You could maybe rewind and watch that a number of times and practice it yourself if you want to do that. But once again, you could just do a regular knot and then wrap the wire around itself. So here, same thing. I'll just twist the wire. And I'll just snip off a little bit of the excess at the end. For the final step, I'll put these bumpers on in the corners here. So I just need them on the bottom two corners. So I'll put one in the bottom right. One at the bottom left. Okay, so there's your artwork in the sectional frame all ready to be hung. I hope that was helpful for you. Please uh, send me a message if you have any questions on how to do that. And I hope you have a great day and Merry Christmas to you.